Hello, uh, welcome back to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. This week we're talking about harmonic sounds, sounds that have a very clear pitch, or what we also call a fundamental frequency. And in this uh, demonstration class, I want to show some tools within uh, Sonic Visualizer, some uh, plugins that allow us to analyze uh, the pitch of uh, several sounds. So let's go to uh, Sonic Visualizer and let's open uh, the file of uh, singing uh, female from the SMS tools directory uh, from which uh, we use most of uh, the sounds. And uh, so here it is, and uh, we can listen to that. So that's a quite clear uh, voiced uh, sound with a very clear tone, the timbre quite homogeneous throughout, so we can uh, hear quite well the pitch of it. In fact, if we zoom in into the, the sound, we will be able to see the periodicity uh, quite uh, easily. So that means that uh, a time domain approach uh, could uh, be able to uh, identify this uh, pitch. So let's uh, analyze uh, the pitch of this sound using uh, a, a time domain approach. But first, uh, let's uh, open the pane with the spectrogram. Okay. Um, so this is the spectrogram of this sound. And if we zoom in the lower part, we see uh, these uh, horizontal lines, which is, uh, are the harmonics of the sound. And the first one, this more red one, is clearly the, the fundamental, the first harmonic. If we make the window size a little bit bigger, like 2048, this is even more clear. Okay, so let's zoom even more. Okay, and now let's uh, compute the pitch uh, using a time domain approach. And uh, let's open a plugin uh, that is the Audio Pitch Detector, which was developed by Paul Rossier, and the actual uh, implementation was done by uh, Chris Cannon. And, um, and we will be using uh, the yin algorithm. It, this plugin has uh, several algorithms. And uh, we talked about the yin algorithm in the theory lecture. That's a quite popular algorithm that basically is similar to an autocorrelation uh, function. Um, and see, let's see what it does. Okay, so it has some parameters to control, like the, the range that we will be accepting, uh, the lowest fundamental, the highest fundamental. Uh, silence threshold, the, the frame size within which we're going to compute this, uh, this uh, measure, and then the, the increment in time. So let's just uh, take the default parameters and uh, let's uh, compute them. Okay, so here we see this purple line on top uh, of this uh, first uh, harmonic. So it uh, very much uh, tracked quite well uh, the whole uh, pitch uh, contour, of course, except in the in the attack that we see uh, where there is some silence, and uh, it found some pitches that may not be uh, in the right uh, place. Um, okay, so now we can zoom into these, uh, and we will be able to see the actual numbers that it computed. Okay, so these numbers three seventy two, three seventy one. Okay, are spaced uh, 512 samples, so every 512 samples we have one of these values. And uh, this uh, tone, if, if we recall it, starts a little bit high, and then it goes down, up, and then, uh, uh, then uh, finish in the same range. So we will see this uh, frequency, so it starts around uh, 4, 409, 414, then it will go down, to uh, lower frequencies like 371, and then it will go up again to uh, 443 uh, to end uh, at the kind of at the initial frequency range, which was around uh, 400 and, uh, and something hertz. Okay, so with that we can really measure quite well these frequencies. Let's take another sound that is not as easy as this one. So for example, let's take a, a speech sound, a speech male, which is a lower sound and may have uh, some more problems than uh, this one. So let's uh, listen to that. Do you hear me? They don't lie at all. 
Okay, uh, and let's let's do the same process. Let's uh, let's uh, first uh, zoom into it. Uh, let's uh, get the spectro a spectrogram of uh, this sound. Let's make it a little bigger, and let's uh, zoom into the lower part of it. Well, we will need to take a bigger uh, window in order to visualize the, the horizontal lines better. So let's uh, take 2048. Okay, that's better. But even in this case, we can even do more than that. So, okay, this uh, may be better. So here we see these uh, harmonics. And clearly, there are several utterances. So um, we see them... Uh, with uh, silence in between and some consonants in, uh, in between too. So now let's use the same algorithm. Okay, the audio pitch detector and let's use the same yin uh, frequency estimator and let's just use the same parameters. Okay, and uh, well the color is not uh, so easy to visualize so let's change the color. Maybe let's, let's make it uh, like black. Okay, so now we see the pitch track that it uh, found, and clearly, well, let's zoom in a little bit more. Okay, and uh, now there is a, uh, it's pretty good, but uh, there is uh, some points that are, are well, are not correct, but uh, again, they're not correct because uh, they are trying to uh, identify the fundamental frequency of some silence. So by controlling the, like the silence threshold and some other parameters, we might be able to get a better uh, pitch track. Maybe the one that is not so good is the, this uh, fragment here, in which uh, there is clearly some uh, pitch and it got a little bit confused. It was jumping, and if we look, if we zoom even more, we will see the actual values. Uh, so it it's, uh, was quite uh, not very clear on the frequency that uh, the fundamental frequency was. Okay. Anyway, so that's a pretty good uh, tool to analyze the pitch of, uh, of monophonic sounds. So now let's open a polyphonic sound. Let's open that uh, uh, fragment of Carnatic music that uh, we have uh, been uh, hearing in some in some classes. Okay. So this is. Uh, uh, this is it. Let's listen to that. Okay, so that's a quite more complex sound. Uh, we, we also listen clearly the voice, but there is this percussion instrument and some a, a little bit of the violin at the end and some drone. Uh, but uh, definitely we need a frequency domain approach. So first, uh, again, let's open the, um, the spectrogram. Okay, and let's make it bigger so we can see better. And let's zoom in into the lower parts. Okay, let's uh, make uh, the window bigger so that we can see some things, maybe even bigger. Okay, now we start seeing some horizontal um, lines that might be uh, the voice and might be uh, the, the drone that, uh, that is underneath and the violin here at the end. Okay, but so now we, let's use a frequency domain approach that uh, will attempt to identify the, the different pitch contours and identify the prominent pitch. And that's, uh, I downloaded uh, one plugin um, that is uh, Melodia that was developed uh, by uh, Justin Salomon uh, at uh, the MTG, the Music Technology Group. And it has uh, two, uh, two parts. One, it has uh, all the intermediate steps that are used, and then it has the final result. Okay, so let's start with intermediate steps. And uh, first, uh, what it does, it uh, looks at what is called the salience uh, function. So the salience function, uh, well, let's uh, just use the default parameters. Uh, let's just uh, show it. Okay, so this is the salience function. This is a, a computation that is done. Now the horizontal scale is in cents, it's not, um, it's not in hertz. And uh, basically it uh, attempts to identify possible fundamental frequencies, so possible uh, sinusoidal lines. So it does a sinusoidal analysis. It finds all these sinusoidal tracks 
and it tries to identify which of the sinusoidal tracks might be fundamentals of um, a harmonic series. And, and this is what it does. And then the next step is to um, find the, the contours, possible contours, that are the most prominent ones of these uh, possible uh, fundamental frequencies. And these are the uh, pitch contours. Okay, now it's computing. So these are possible contours that it found that might be candidates uh, to be the, the fundamental frequency of a, a given uh, sound source. And then you can refine it a little bit more by uh, identifying the ones that are really uh, melodic contours. Okay. And, okay, so these are candidate melodic contours. And then the actual algorithm returns, um, let's uh, now call the actual uh, algorithm the melody uh, um, ex uh, extraction. Again, it has uh, the parameters of the, the range that it accepts. It has the, the size of the frame and the window increment here. It's 128, so it's very fine uh, uh, advancement. And there is uh, some other parameters that you might want to play around with, like the voicing tolerance in terms of how, uh, how uh, the voicing characteristics, how strong we rely on, on the prominent voice to be, uh, uh, have a very clear uh, pitch, etc. So let's uh, compute that. Okay, and let's change the color again to uh, black. Okay, and this is what it obtained, what it uh, uh, believes to be the prominent pitch. Uh, we can zoom in uh, into that, and uh, again, we will see uh, the, the values. And now they're very, uh, they're very uh, spaced uh, by 128 samples, so they, uh, we have to zoom in a lot to visualize the individual values, but if we let's uh, zoom in maybe uh, more vertically and uh, maybe not so much horizontally. Okay, and now let's uh, visualize it again. Okay, so here we see clearly there is some areas that uh, well. It did pretty good. So, in fact, let's listen to this while we are watching the, the actual plot. Okay, so it, it makes some sense. Uh, of course, a, a good way to check if this is a, a good candidate for the fundamental frequency of the voice would be to synthesize and listen uh, the actual uh, contour that we obtain, but uh, Sonic Visualizer cannot do that. But anyway, we, we showed that in the, in the theory lecture, and this contour was not uh, that bad. It was pretty good. Okay, so that's all I wanted uh, to say. Um, so basically, we have tried to um, do pitch analysis on, uh, on several sounds using uh, Sonic Visualizer and uh, uh, several BAM plugins. In, um, more specifically, we use two plugins, one that implements the yin algorithm, Aubio, and one of the algorithms is the yin, and then Melodia, which is a, a plugin uh, developed uh, at the MTG by uh, Justin Salomon, that you can find more documentation in this, uh, in this uh, directory, so in this uh, uh, website. So feel free to go there and get more information or to download the plugin. And, uh, of course, the sounds that we use uh, come from uh, free sound. So that's all. So hopefully this uh, gave you a practical view on the issue of pitch. Uh, sometimes easier, and sometimes, of course, in complex sounds, uh, this issue can be quite complicated. And it's a necessary step to be able to handle uh, harmonic sounds and to be able to analyze and uh, understand and synthesize these sounds. So that's what we're going to be uh, doing uh, in the next uh, demonstration class, we're going to be actually using the harmonic uh, model that we talked about in theory to analyze uh, the sound using uh, uh, harmonics. So thank you very much, and I see you uh, next class.